present circumstances. Be they rain, failures, economic losses, relationship losses, professional losses, personal losses. By not being prepared, thinking ahead, it's your choice. What do you want to do economically? Where do you want to go? What do you want to be? What would you like to have? What would you like to share? How much would you like to earn? How far would you like to go? Those are some major questions to ask. And for that all to work out like you wanted to for the next five or ten years, in my personal opinion, you've got to get serious. Then you have to get serious about another important subject. And that important subject is called personal development. Personal development is striving hard to become the kind of person that you want to be. And to become the kind of person you want to be, you've got to work at it. Ten years from now, you will surely become someone. The big question is, who? Some people are always pulled aside by the distractions of the distraction. But here's what's powerful. If you have a list of high purpose in your life, it pulls you toward the future. And the more powerful the purpose is, the stronger it pulls. And here's the other great advantage if you have purpose for the future. It pulls you through all kinds of challenges and all kinds of difficulties. If you don't have these strong purposes for the future, it's easy to get swallowed by a bad day. It's easy to be almost annihilated by a poor month. And it's easy sometimes to almost disappear beneath the waves of a, a year that goes backwards if you don't have something to pull you beyond that year. Develop the ability to act. Take action. Not hasty if it isn't required, but don't lose much time. Here's the time to act. When the idea is hot and the emotion is strong. That's the time to act. See, Mr. Ron, I'd like to have a library like yours. See, if you feel strong about that, what you got to do is get the first book and then get the second book. Before the feeling passes and before the idea gets dim, action pronto, action immediate, action as soon as possible. Because if you don't, here's what happens. We call it the law of diminishing intent. We intend to when the idea strikes us. We intend to when the emotion is high. But now if you don't translate that into action fairly soon, now the intent starts to diminish, diminish, diminish. And a month from now, it's cold. A year from now, it can't be found. Let other people lead small lives, but not you. Let everybody else cry over small hurts, but not you. Let everybody else argue over non-essentials, but not you. Deal in things that matter. Make sure what you do is the product of your own conclusion. Take advice, but not orders. Let everybody around you be helpful, but then put that through your own mental computer and make sure what you do is the product of what you conclude based on all the input. All of us should be students of inevitability. Without kidding myself, if I keep up my current daily practices, where will it take me in 10 years without being disillusioned? I don't want to just cross my fingers and walk the wrong road. Let me tell you what I think messes up the mind the most. Doing less than you can. It causes all kinds of psychic damage. Being less than you can be, trying less than you can try, somehow damages your mind, your self-image. Here's what I've discovered. The minute you turn the cycle around and start motivating yourself, you'll see immediate rewards. Maybe not monetary ones, not yet. But it's how you feel about yourself that's of the greatest value. Discover all you can do. See how much you can earn. How much you can share. How much you can start. How much you can finish. How far you can reach. And how far you can extend your influence. Some people out there would have us believe that positive affirmation is more important than activity. Instead of doing something constructive to change their lives, they would have us repeating slogans and canned affirmations like every day and in every way. I'm getting better and better. Well, improving our lives doesn't just happen with wishful thinking. Getting better and better only happens with the discipline of doing better and better. Discipline is the requirement for progress. And affirmations without discipline are, in all reality, delusions. Affirmations can be effective, 
as long as you remember two very important rules. Number one, you should never allow affirmation to replace action. Feeling better is no substitute for doing better. And number two, whatever you choose to affirm must be the truth. If the truth happens to be that you're broke, the best affirmation would be to simply say, I'm broke. Face it, accept it, be responsible for it, and change it. By admitting that you're broke, by saying it out loud, you'll probably be disgusted enough to start thinking about how to change the situation. Anyone saying, I'm broke with any conviction will most likely be motivated to take action. Confronting harsh realities has an incredible effect. Confronting the truth and then disciplining yourself, instead of failing to take responsibility, inevitably leads to positive change. Reality is always the best beginning. You see, within reality lies the possibility to create your own personal miracle. And the power of faith starts with reality. If you can bring yourself to state the truth about a situation, then, as the saying goes, the truth will set you free. Here's another old saying. Faith isn't faith unless it's all you're holding on to. If your life and your circumstances have resulted in a situation that is ugly, call it ugly. If you've lost it all, admit that you've lost it all. Be responsible for it. And if faith is all you've got left, use it. Create your own personal miracle. Once you understand and accept the truth, the promise of the future is freed from the shackles of deception. Once you accept the truth, the promise of the future will pull you forward. For every disciplined effort, there are multiple rewards. That's one of life's great arrangements. In fact, it's an extension of that biblical law that says that if you sow well, you will reap well. Here's a unique part of the law of sowing and reaping. Not only does it suggest that we'll all reap what we've sown, it also suggests that we'll reap much more. Life is full of laws that both govern and explain behaviors, but this may well be the major law we need to understand. For every disciplined effort, there are multiple rewards. What a concept. If you render unique service, your reward will be multiplied. If you're fair and honest and patient with others, your reward will be multiplied. If you give more than you expect to receive, your reward is more than you expect. But remember, the key word here, as you might well imagine, is discipline. Everything of value requires care, attention, and discipline. But remember, the key word here, as you might well imagine, is discipline. Everything of value requires care, attention, and discipline. Children require discipline. They must have a structure built for them. They must have boundaries to work within so they feel secure and comfortable to explore and grow. They must learn to recognize what's right and what's wrong, what's acceptable behavior and what's not acceptable. Children require constant and consistent discipline. Otherwise, they'll be confused as to how they're supposed to behave. Likewise, our thoughts require discipline. We must consistently determine our inner boundaries and our codes of conduct, or our thoughts will be confused. And if our thoughts are confused, we will become hopelessly lost in the maze of life. Confused thoughts produce confused results. Remember the law. For every disciplined effort, there are multiple rewards. Learn the discipline of writing a card or a letter to a friend. Learn the discipline of paying your bills on time. Arriving to appointments on time or using your time more effectively. Learn the discipline of paying attention or paying your taxes or paying yourself. Learn the discipline of having regular meetings with your associates or your spouse or your child or your parent. Learn the discipline of learning all you can learn, of teaching all you can teach, of reading all you can read. For each discipline, multiple rewards. For each book, new knowledge. For each success, new ambition. For each challenge, new understanding. For each failure, new determination. Life is like that. Even the bad experiences of life 
provide their own special contribution. But a word of caution here for those who neglect the need for care and attention to life's disciplines. Everything has its price. Everything affects everything else. Neglect discipline and there will be a price to pay. All things of value can be taken for granted with the passing of time. That's what we call the law of familiarity. Without the discipline of paying constant daily attention, we take things for granted. Be serious. Life's not a practice session. If you're often inclined to toss your clothes onto the chair rather than hang them in the closet, be careful. It could suggest a lack of discipline. And remember, a lack of discipline in the small areas of life can cost you heavily in the more important areas of life. You cannot clean up your company until you learn the discipline of cleaning your own garage. You cannot be impatient with your children and be patient with your distributors or your employees. You cannot inspire others to sell more when that goal is inconsistent with your own conduct. You cannot admonish others to read good books when you don't have a library card. Think about your life at this moment. What areas need attention right now? Perhaps you've had a disagreement with someone you love or someone who loves you and your anger won't allow you to speak to that person. Wouldn't this be an ideal time to examine your need for a new discipline? Perhaps you're on the brink of giving up or starting over or starting out. And the only missing ingredient to your incredible success story in the future is a new and self-imposed discipline that will make you try harder and work more intensely than you ever thought you could. The most valuable form of discipline is the one that you impose upon yourself. Don't wait for things to deteriorate so drastically that someone else must impose discipline into your life. Wouldn't that be tragic? How could you possibly explain the fact that someone else thought more of you than you thought of yourself, that they forced you to get up early and get out into the marketplace when you could have been content to let success go to someone else who cared more about themselves? Your life, my life, the life of each one of us is going to serve as either a warning or an example. A warning of the consequences of neglect, self-pity, lack of direction and ambition. Or an example of talent put to use, of discipline self-imposed and of objectives clearly perceived and intensely pursued. Engaging in genuine discipline requires that you develop the ability to take action. You don't need to be hasty if it isn't required, but you don't want to lose much time. Let's say you would like to build your library. If that is a strong desire for you, what you've got to do is get the first book, then get the second book. Take action as soon as possible, before the feeling pa The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You'll go through some failures. When you're in that darkness, you want to sit there and wait for the light to come. But you can't wait. The only way out is to step forward, to face your fears, to become your own light. There's going to be a lot of times y'all about to fail. We are all a work in progress. But in that moment, I want you to remember the power of you. You will change the world. Even when you're struggling, even when you're discouraged, and you feel like other people have given up on you, don't ever give up on yourself. The indomitable will, if you have a belief, you can do something. The only way you grow that, like in the gym, you grow your muscles by actually exercising them. To grow the individual will to become something, you must get comfortable with fear and failure. They must be your best friends. They're the only one that moves that needle of life. Every hero you guys had was called an idiot, crazy, a loser. You must break society's status quo. Status quo is normality. It's alive but not living. It's death on a stick, guys. The belief of the individual overrides thousands of people with just intent. Safety, comfort zones are dead zones. You have to continue to push yourself because your true potential will never be matched, guys. Nobody is going to hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward.
Now, if you know what you're worth, then go out and get what you're worth. But you got to be willing to take the hits. The future rewards those who press on. With patient and firm determination, I'm going to press on. I don't have time to feel sorry for myself. I don't have time to complain. I'm going to press on. Stop complaining. Stop crying. We are going to press on. We've got work to do. What's your why? What motivates you? What pushes you? What drives you? And if that thing is internal, if nobody has to call you, if nobody has to prod you, if nobody has to reward you, if nobody has to give you anything, if you are self-motivated and self-regulated, you can have it, you can be it, you can do it. Take ownership. Take extreme ownership. Don't make excuses. Don't blame any other person or any other thing. Get control.